YouTube, Jail Folks here. Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I've got my good buddy Matt Lawrence here in the studio with me. And uh, he's got a really cool Heritage guitar I wanted you all to check out. It's called the Heritage H530, right? The H530. It's, yeah. it's modeled after the Gibson 330. Cool. Yeah, so we've got two Heritage guitars with us today. I have my Heritage H535 and he's got his Heritage H530. And these are very similar guitars, but they do have some major differences between the two of them. Mm -hmm. And basically what we're going to do today is check out the differences between these two guitars, uh, test them out in the studio. We've got two really good amps. i got a Rev G G20, and he's got a, what, a Rivera? Rivera Venus Do. Yeah, so we got two really cool amps to uh, check out the tones of these guitars. But, uh, but first, before we get into the sound test, Tell me a little bit about your H530 here and some of the specs on it. Man, uh, this is the first guitar that I've ever had that had a trapeze bridge. And oh yeah, I, I didn't notice that. It does have yeah, that. Yeah, so, you know. Trapeze. You know, <laughs> it gives you a little bit of something. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, but um, it's got the Lawler P90s. Um, to be honest, that's about it <laughs> off of it. But it's got the classic, the Grover tuners, um, and it's great, man. This is a 2018, and I've had awesome. it pretty much since then. Yeah, it's, yeah. Heritage guitars, they're, they're good for life. You yeah. Know? Like, they're, they're solid. Um, so, yeah, that, that's cool about the bridge. What did you say the bridge was called? Uh, like so, a, this is a trapeze bridge. A trapeze bridge. See, yeah. That, that right there is a major difference between these two guitars. This actually has what they call this the uh, uh, the hardtail, the hardtail, stop tail. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a hardtail bridge on this one. So that's that's one of the major differences. And another major difference between these two guitars is this guitar has a wooden block running all the way through the middle of it, and that guitar is completely hollow. Mm -hmm. So that's another big difference. And then another big difference between these two guitars is that guitar has P90 pickups, and this has humbuckers. This is basically a standard H535, but I did get this custom ordered from the Heritage Shop, uh, I think back in 2016. This is a Cherry Translucent, and it's got a, two different pickups on it, actually. It's got, I, I believe, a 59 in the bridge and a Seth Lover pickup in the, uh, in the neck. And yeah, like I said, it's got a block running through it, so this guitar doesn't really feed back that much. You're going to find more of the feedback issues in that guitar because they're more used for a cleaner tones mm -hmm. and um, lower volumes, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. So more of that jazzier, bluesy, traditional blues sound you can get out of that guitar. But you mm -hmm. can also get that out of this guitar as well. But two totally different instruments, and that's another one I want to add to my collection too in the near future. But both of these guitars, I mean, visually-wise, look pretty similar. They're basically the, bit, the same type of body style, mm -hmm. besides the uh, block running in this one. Um, one of the things that you'll notice like on his guitar is the headstock is what basically all of the standard heritage guitars, they come with the headstock like this. And this one would have came with that headstock too, but I actually specifically ordered for uh, there to be binding around the headstock mm -hmm. and then the pearl inlay. But my other heritage H150 that was a standard, actually both of them that I have, um, have that same logo too. But that's mm -hmm. one of the things you'll see on some of the standards. And then this guitar also has Grover tuners as well. Mm -hmm. So both of these, basically the same design. I mean, you look at the back; they're basically yeah. the same guitar. Yeah, you have the little, uh, yeah, the little waves and stuff. You get the roasted, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah, so it. these the flame on these, it. Both of these have maple top and uh, maple sides, mm -hmm. maple back. And um, what's? Do you know what color that is? So this is uh, placid blue. Yeah, that's. Or, the, uh, no, Pelham blue. Pelham blue. Pelham blue. Cool. That's not yeah. one you see that often, mm -hmm. I feel like. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, and the way that I got it was I had sent uh, my buddy that was running a guitar store at the time, I sent a video of somebody playing a Gibson 330, and then I found one at Carter Vintage Guitars in Nashville, and I played it, I was like, this is it, I gotta have it. He was like, well, okay, wait, I, I this is a guy that I bought so much gear from in yeah. the past and he knows yeah. exactly what I want and he was like I know it's crazy you can finance the guitar I can send it to you and if you don't like it we'll just deal with it yeah. but this is 
he's like, if I could buy it for myself, I would buy it. That's cool. And so I was like, So you like, got this okay. one at Carter Vintage? No, no, so or... I, uh, I tried one at Carter Vintage. Okay. I got this at Waterwheel Guitars in Pennsylvania. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and uh, yeah, and so I was like, yeah, Chris, you're right. Awesome. Here it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of you may not know out there that uh, Heritage Guitars is actually built out of the original Gibson factory at 225 Parsons Street in Kalamazoo. So um, back in the day, there were like four workers that started Heritage. They uh, ended up leaving Gibson because Gibson was relocating, I think, to Nashville and Memphis. I think it was Memphis first. Maybe Memphis first. It was Memphis, then Nashville. And, uh, yeah. So four of the original guys that worked for Gibson bought the original factory and started Heritage Guitars and they had um, some copyright issues when it first happened but that was settled I think like 30 40 years ago mm -hmm. so that's been settled a long time so basically they make an, a great alternative to Gibson's so both of these are basically modeled after Gibson's mm -hmm. this one is similar to like a Gibson ES335 and that's like a Gibson ES330 330 yeah yeah so a little bit different than the Gibsons, and I've done videos comparing this guitar to my ES-335, and they are two totally different instruments. But the Heritage is a great alternative to, like, getting, instead of getting an ES-335, the H-535 is really a great alternative, and so is that guitar. Yeah. But, uh, but anyways, um, what's, another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, the neck profile. Yeah. Now, I haven't felt the neck profile on that one. I think it's, it's 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 probably a C. It feels like yeah, it's like a medium C. Yeah, it's like that's that's like what this one is too. Yeah, so like to me, I feel that one. That's yeah, that's pretty like much pretty much the same neck yeah. profile too, which I like. That's a nice neck profile. Mm -hmm. But anyways, uh, we're gonna check these guitars out. We're gonna do a little studio test and show you the differences between each guitar. We're gonna run through um, each pickup selection both clean and with a little bit of grit and show you the uh the difference what they sound like
guitars through my Rev G20 and through a couple pedals. We started off going through the pickup selections just on clean. Then we added a clean boost and an overdrive. And those were the uh, tones that we got. So uh, what were you uh, thinking between the two guitars? Like what, what was your initial thoughts? Man, when, because my main, I, I usually play a Les Paul with mini humbuckers. Oh yeah. So hearing the, uh, the 535 with actual humbuckers is like okay it's it sounds more i don't i don't want to say like punchy but this sounds really it sounds a lot softer in yeah. comparison yeah definitely. you know because then even because i don't have any guitars with full humbuckers really at all so yeah I've, I've never even played mini humbuckers yeah before. so i have so i have the minis um and i've never had full humbuckers i was like oh okay so cool yeah but yeah um it definitely Hearing you play b both like back to back, this definitely sounds like single coils. Yeah, yeah, that, it definitely that, does. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I got from it too. Um, one of the big things that we forgot to mention before is um, this guitar is a lot lighter mm -hmm. than this one. Probably, I would say close to a pound. I'd say more than that. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. I mean, I would say this probably is like maybe four or five pounds. Yeah. Yeah, I probably. would say this is probably. That's probably an eighter. Seven, seven or eight. Seven or eight or... I'd say right in there. Yeah. And that's because of the block running through it. But mm -hmm. that that's really like the only difference weight wise. And it's still not that heavy. It, it's not that heavy. Yeah. Like it, compared to like Les Pauls and stuff, this guitar is actually pretty light. And it is lighter than my ES335 too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, I got the same type of impression. Like it, it was a little bit cleaner. Mm -hmm. And it's got a little bit more bite like that, that twang. Mm -hmm. Like I, I kind of like that yeah. out of P90s, you know? And for the jazzy stuff, like mm -hmm. it, it sounded like super clean. And uh, for the distorted stuff, it had a cool punch to it. Too, yeah. You know? And um, you know, like I compare like the 335 and the 535 to basically kind of like, it's very similar to a Les Paul. It's got mm -hmm. a, it's a little more airy and um, it's got a little more spunk to it, I feel mm. like, you know, than like, and this a, is like a one, Paul. This is like one other rung in the, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, in the yeah. softer stage. Yeah, exactly. You and know, because it's like Les Paul, then 330, or, yeah. uh, it would be a 535 or, mm -hmm. a, or a 335. And then the next airy level yeah. is like the 330. Yeah, it's just like another area. good weapon to have an arsenal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Having like a guitar with P90s, and especially... Uh, like a full hollow body like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's super cool. Especially like if you're playing like traditional blues or something like that yeah. guitar would be killer mm -hmm. for traditional blues or jazz or anything like that. And what do you like primarily, what style of music do you primarily play with that guitar? Um, with this guitar... That's like another thing we didn't talk about before was his yeah. background. He actually plays in a bunch of bands here in Nashville. There's a yeah. lot of touring. He's played Austin City Limits. Mm. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, it was fun, man. Yeah. Um, so yeah, tell us a little bit about your background. What kind of music you play with that guitar? Man, most of the time I'm playing R&B with this guitar. Um, Perfect you know, it's like, yeah. you know, it's like yeah. just a little bit, but, um, but yeah, with this guitar, because of the feedback, I use this for a lot of sessions, mm -hmm. um, at home and if I have to go somewhere or, um, I took it out on a tour where I was running ears. Mm -hmm. So then there's no stage volume. Yeah. Um, but it's, this is like the per also happens to be the perfect guitar for me to practice with because, because it is fully hollow mm -hmm. that you get more acoustic volume. Yeah. And like you're saying for your lessons and stuff, yeah. like it's the perfect guitar yeah. just to go to and, you know, teach somebody, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and, uh, yeah, because it's so light, because I, I like to wear straps, so I like to kind of sit up and, 
And it doesn't, I don't feel like it's weighing, like I can never sit with my Les Paul for five hours and yeah. two lessons, you know? That's awesome, man. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, so I do a lot of R&B stuff. Um, I have done a bunch of country gigs, but I'm not like a traditional, like, Broadway, you know, guy. Gotcha. Um, I, ch I play at this one place called Acme Feed and Seed oh, yeah. every for Thursday. Acme, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, that's, like, all the way at the end of Broadway. Mm -hmm. So it's all the way down by the river, so... It's not really the same thing as doing like a typical Broadway game yeah, like Honky yeah. Tonk Central yeah, or something. Yeah, definitely. Like that. Um, yeah, so it's right there on the end, so it's like easy in, easy mm -hmm. out most of the time. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of a lot of like dance kind of stuff, like R and B, Earth Wind and Fire kind of stuff. Awesome. Um, and yeah, so that's for the most part what I play. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, like uh, during the pandemic, we were both kind of like out of gigs at one point, and mm -hmm. we were kind of like talking to like. How can we get some business going and stuff? And uh, we both kind of started Fiverr around yeah. the same time. I actually introduced him to Fiverr. And, you know, I've introduced a lot of guitar players to Fiverr. And they're like, yeah, that sounds awesome. And they never really commit to it. But my man, Matt, here, mm -hmm. really committed to it. Yeah, and man. he's doing really well on Fiverr. I'm doing really well. It really helped us through the pandemic and stuff. You can check out his Fiverr account for lessons and mm -hmm. all kinds of different stuff that he does. He does a lot of different loops and stuff too yeah. for your sessions yeah which is pretty cool too so if you're needing loops matt's a really good guy to hit up yeah man but i'm uh, sitting on hundreds of them yeah yeah <laughs> exactly, so man. man that's awesome yeah but anyways matt thanks for coming in and yeah, bringing course, in the, the heritage h530 and uh thank you all for watching the video y'all stay tuned to the channel i got a bunch of videos like this coming be sure to like share and subscribe and i'll catch you on the next one peace, peace.